Hello mates, welcome to the Baron Reviews, with me the Baron. And I thought I'd do a little V-Real tilt brush video. I'll tell you guys about a story I read on the internet. So it began because I was chatting with my roommate and uh, he was telling me about this thing that I'd never heard of before called sleep paralysis. Now let's see here, is this what we want to use today? I seem to be all about these, this uh, weapon. What about, what do I do oil today? Ink, maybe? Yeah, do ink. So basically, he's describing this thing to me. It's essentially sleep, sleep paralysis. What it, what it generally is, is that when you go asleep, your body paralyzes itself. Now, forgive the fact this is not going to be very scientific. This is going to be my very amateurish way of explaining it. Your body puts itself into a paralysis. Now, the reason it does this is because uh, when you have dreams and stuff like that, it wants to make sure that you don't, you know, punch the fuck out of your walls or whatever like that when you're trashing about in your dream. So basically, it's like your brain can think things that are real, but your body won't let it uh, act on it, so to speak. So anyway, the gist of it is that... Uh, you are essentially asleep, but your brain is telling itself that it's awake. And so it's a sensation that uh, you can have as fucked up thoughts as you would have in a dream, except you're completely, uh, completely feeling like this is real. So what he's described as is uh, a, like a nightmare. And typically, it's just a very strange phenomenon that people tend to find that it generally involves some kind of like dark figure, like menacing figure in your room, uh, leering at you, you know, stalking you while you're asleep, and you can't do anything. And you can feel its presence, but you can't act, you can't scream, you can't do anything. You just have to wait out the clock. But for all, like... Uh, other intents and purposes, it feels, it feels like real. So people have described it as... I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to erase this, I think. Uh, people have described it as a sensation of like... Uh, like a, a demon or a monster, you know, in the room. So anyway... Uh, and yeah, and my, my roommate has said the same thing. He said like, you know, he'd, he'd you know, quote unquote, wake up. No, he's not actually awake. Uh, but he would feel like he wakes up, he can open his eyes. And then in the corner of the room, he can see like a, um, a silhouette of a man just standing there in the corner, just standing watching in the dark. And he can't do anything. It's like he's paralyzed with fear. And other people have described uh, physical symptoms of it, such as, um, I guess this is what you call psychosomatic, uh, such as a weight on her chest. And so, like, I read one thing about uh, this girl saying she had this experience and she saw what looked like a, like a demon, I guess. A little demon, like gremlin. And it came and it crawled up her bed and sat on her chest and uh, was just leering at her, you know? So anyway, the story I wanted to tell you guys was a creepy story I saw on Reddit. It was a girl when she was six years old, and she describes the scariest thing that ever happened to her. She said she was in these bunk beds, and her little sister was below, and she was in the bunk bed above. And she says she felt like she like woke up one night because she thought she could hear some really like deep, uh, bassy chuckling coming from somewhere in the room. So the girl um, can't move or anything like that, but in like the corner of her eye or whatever, she sees in the doorway her mother, or at least it looks like her mother. It's just this shape, the shape of uh, what the girl believes is her mother. Except something's not right. Something's, something's off with this. And 
Her mother is just standing there in the doorway in the pitch black of the bedroom and just like chuckling to herself. Then she's described after a little bit of time, the mother or whatever the thing was begins to like what she describes as waddle over to her. Like not walking, just kind of like uh, sliding or like, you know, crawling over towards her and gets right up by her bed she so she's at the point where this thing is face level uh you know it's her, her head is on the same height as the poor girl in the bed and so um she just stands there and the girl notices that the mother Something's off. She, she described it as where the wild things are. You know, remember that book? She said, you know, she looked just uh, feral. Feral maybe is a good word. And the mother just stood there uh, laughing or, or chuckling. Chuckling, I believe, was the word used. So the girl, you know, thinks it's her mother, but thinks something's up with it. But she's getting freaked out by the mother. Well, then the mother slowly reaches out her arms and she's very misshapen. And she begins to gently tickle the girl in the bed. Now, that's pretty weird, uh, weird enough, but the girl can't move or do anything. So she's just sitting there and the mother's just chuckling away, like, you know, tickling the girl above the covers. Um... And then it gets to a point where it starts to be gum like a bit uncomfortable, you know? She's kind of like, she's kind of like pinching too hard. And she's kind of rustling too much. And the girl starts to get a bit scared. Um, and suddenly she notices that the chuckle slowly turns into more like a guttural growl. And suddenly she's not tickling anymore. She's pinching and she's twisting. And grabbing. And the girl, you know, is freaking out. And the girl gets deeper and deeper. And the poor girl just thinks, why isn't my uh, sister waking up? Why doesn't she jump up to my rescue and stuff like that? And then, that's the story. That's the end of the story. She just woke up. It all disappeared. And she realized what had happened. Or I guess she probably didn't because she was probably too fucking young. And she was only six. Well, what the fuck, you know? How, how is this a... Uh, how is this a thing in the human body, you know? Like, I, I didn't find out um, why it is some people are susceptible to this and why some people are not. Like, for example, I'm not. And I, like, like I said, I didn't even... I didn't even hear about this. I didn't even know this was a thing. And I, 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 my, my mate, John, was telling me about it and I just uh, couldn't believe it, you know? Like, that, how, how could this be, like, a thing? And so then I did a like, little research about it. I started reading all about that sleep thing and how some people are more, uh, some people, or how all people like paralyze themselves in their sleep. And then how just some people get this strange uh, phenomenon called sleep paralysis. And then that led to, you know, a whole expedition down, you know, the rabbit hole, just like reading more and more stories about it and just... They're so fucked up and some people still have it. And the only thing they can do is all they can do is just hope that it passes quickly. But there's no way they can uh, control it or stop it, you know? It's, not, it's like the opposite of a lucid dream. Maybe we'll put a little little friendly window here. A little frame around it. Not the best drawer. There you go, guys. So just a little thing I thought was real interesting. Just one of those interesting things I found out about in recent uh, times. If you've ever suffered from sleep paralysis, do let me know in any uh, social media outlets. I'm real interested to hear. But anyway, I'll leave it there for today. Just a little, just a little quick one for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, cheers.